And we're pleased to be joined once again by a good friend of Tell Hill 24-7, Taylor Lindloff from right here in Port Hawkesbury. Taylor, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me, Adam. It's good to have you here, and uh, we have you here for a very special reason. Tis the season, as we know, and if there's one thing that I love about Christmas, it's sending Christmas cards. But you decided to take it to a whole other level this year. Can you tell me a little bit, first of all, about your Caremus Card Challenge? What exactly it is and what you're challenging people to do? Well, the Caremus Card Challenge started out on Facebook having people to put aside just one Christmas card as they're getting their Christmas presents and gifts set up, fill it out, either keep it anonymous or write a little message and deliver it to a nursing home, food bank, or an essential worker, anyone that could be in need of some Christmas cheer this year, upload it onto Facebook or Twitter with the hashtag care card challenge and then challenge a couple friends to join so that more people can spread the Christmas cheer and more people can receive the love this Christmas. Uh, I decided to do something a little extra for my end of the challenge. I'm doing 500 Christmas cards. 500? 500, 500, half a grand. (laughs) I'm just curious as to who some of these cards are going to because you obviously have some destinations in mind in terms of people that could really use a little bit of holiday cheer, especially in December 2020. So uh, just to give people some ideas, who are some of the people that you're going to be giving cards to this year? I'm going to be delivering cards to Straight Richmond Hospital for both the doctors, cleaning teams, and the various departments in the hospital, as well as palliative care patients and long-term patients who will be staying in the hospital over Christmas, as well as the Proxbury Food Bank, the Nursing Home, and Leaside slash Stray Area Women's Place. I actually got a request for a cart to be sent all the way to Quebec for somebody. Really? Yeah, someone's mother is currently in a nursing home. As we know, COVID-19 is unfortunately raging through Quebec, so she's not able to see her mother for Christmas. So she was wondering if I would be able to send a card as a little angel surprise for her. And I'm just curious, it seems like your Facebook campaign, in particular the Care Miss Card campaign, is getting shared on social media and it's going not just in Quebec, but it seems like it's right across the country. Where are you hearing from? A lot of people from Ontario have gotten involved. Uh, Actually, I have one person shared to a local community group for the St. Catharines area. Uh, It's hit all the way to British Columbia as of today. Uh, A lot of people within like the Strait area and Halifax actually ended up sharing it first to a Dollarama group just to feel out the idea And I ended up getting like 800 reactions to it. People ended up commenting like, hey, this is my local nursing home. Here's the info to send cards. Here's uh, local homeless shelters. Here's how you can send mail to people in the Canadian Armed Forces for Christmas. So it ended up just kind of exploding in this one Dollarama halls and fines group. (laughs) So you're getting all kinds of different ways that cards can be sent. And I'm just curious, in terms of getting cards together for people, like, for example, you mentioned the Straight Richmond Hospital over in Evanston. Is it an idea that these cards don't have to be addressed to a specific person? Can you just say these are for patients or these are for people who, for example, are at Leaside Transition House in Port Hawkesbury? How exactly does that all work? Yeah, honestly, I have i don't have names or faces because obviously I don't want to do a privacy violation. So what I've been mm-hmm. doing is I've been signing my cards as to someone special. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, I have going to be making cards up for each individual uh, department at the straight, such as like uh, the dialysis unit, the front desk, et cetera, et cetera. And those ones will be labeled and to be them in general. And for people that I don't have a name and face for, it's to someone special. To really humanize the people who often get forgotten on the fringes of society, unfortunately. I was curious as to how this all came about. We haven't really talked about that yet. And I know you have a very special reason, a very personal reason for launching the Care Miss Card Challenge. Can you tell me a bit about that, Taylor? It actually came to fruition on Saturday the 5th, which was when Christmas Daddies was uh, airing. Mm -hmm. And it 
came to mind because this is actually a way for me to honor my late father who passed away 18 days after Christmas. We were lucky enough to have him at home on his last Christmas because he was a palliative at home care patient. However, he did spend a few hours of Christmas in hospital and looking back it made me think about how many people do not get to spend Christmas at home, how many people are going to be locked down at Christmas due to nursing homes and hospitals during COVID-19, how many people won't get a Christmas card because they don't have a family with them right now, how many people are, have escaped violence and it's risky for them to have mailed letters to them. So what are things we can do to help these people and make them not feel so forgotten in a season and in a year that can be difficult for a lot of people. I'm just curious about your thoughts of Christmas cards overall, Taylor, uh, just because we have moved to a very digital world where we're sending e-cards, we're seeing Facebook and Instagram greetings, tweets go out wishing Merry Christmas. Uh, it still seems though that the basic old fashioned feel of a Christmas card with a handwritten note still appeals to a lot of people. I happen to be one of them. So I just wonder if that has any special meaning for you as well. And if that was a big reason that you launched the campaign too. Definitely. I actually found an Etsy, a uh, small business uh, shop that can make handwriting into a, uh, a necklace or a bracelet. And I actually hope, at some point I'm going to make a, get a bracelet commission from them or a necklace that has my father's last Christmas card message to me that says, love you always. So people, I think kind of forget just how much like just a little handwritten note is. I'm lucky. I'm one of the people who is still raised. Like I would think I was like one of the last generation, really like the millennials were the last generation to really get taught handwriting in school. Like a lot of them just print now, they don't get taught cursive. Mm. So I think especially with some of the community elders and seniors might really get a smile out of seeing a cursive written card, even if it's, it's a little messy for my shaking hands. And who, does, who doesn't love to see like a little sticker, song, sticker sealed envelope come into their doorway when they don't expect it? Yeah. And, I mean, anyone is happy to not see a bill in the mail. <laughs> it's not a bill. Therefore, it's a wonderful thing. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's not a bill. So we're not going to complain today. No, exactly. So how much time do people have to take part in the Karamis card challenge? Taylor, is there any kind of a cutoff point? How does it work? Honestly, the sooner you get your cards into somewhere, the better. That way they have time to distribute. I would say probably toward the end of the last week before Christmas would probably be a good cutoff. We don't want to overwhelm anybody who has to distribute, whether it be food bank donations, things like that. The pandemic has really shown the importance of quote unquote essential workers who a lot of the time are the average person working in a grocery store, in a restaurant. And like, they are so often forgot about and they work so extremely hard. Just if you're getting yourself uh, like some pizza ordered, consider leaving your tipping cash in a card, give it to your delivery driver. Like it's something unexpected that they would really love. That's well said. We've covered quite a bit in just a few moments, Taylor talking about the card challenge. And is there anything else you'd like to add before we wrap this up? We are still doing the challenge online, if at all possible. Check out the hashtag Karamis Card Challenge. You can see people's ideas as well as information on how to send free letters to people in the Canadian Armed Forces, as well as general community help that's going on. I don't just post Christmas cards in the tag. I also post information about where people can get help during the holiday season. Taylor Lindloff, it's great to talk to you again. Congratulations on launching the Caramus Card Challenge. And of course, we wish you and your family uh, the very best for Christmas and for 2021 as well. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Adam. Merry Christmas.
Yes, Merry Christmas to you as well. Taylor Lindloff is an autism and LGBTQ advocate from here in Port Hawkesbury, and she is the official brains behind the Kermis <laughs> Card Challenge, which is now taking shape all over the straight area and all over the country as well.